The way the left tells it, the Republican Party is in this big, massive civil war. It's Tea Party versus establishment, libertarians versus social conservatives. There's infighting, conflict, backbiting, discord. Look, I'm Irish. That's my idea of a family reunion. All in the family at CPAC there, according to Paul Ryan. The roundtable is here. Texas Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro, Peggy Noonan from The Wall Street Journal, ABC senior Washington correspondent Jeff Zeleny, and Republican strategist and ABC News contributor Ana Navarro. Welcome to all of you. And Jeff Zeleny, I want to start with you because you were there this week at CPAC. We heard John's report, his take. What's your take? impressions, different tone? I mean, Paul Ryan is right. There are a lot of different views. But one thing I picked up by watching his speech, he's more serious about running for president than he lets on. Um, so that's one quick takeaway. But look, there is a healthy uh, debate going on inside the Republican Party, but it's also on foreign policy. I mean, in the crisis in uh, Russia, we've seen a huge division here. And Rand Paul, you know, he may not say his views are isolationist, but that's how a lot of Republicans hear them. So I was struck by how, how focused on foreign policy CPAC was, just because it's coming at this big moment. But a lot of time for uh, comebacks and reintroductions. Chris Christie, top of the list, uh -huh. got a big applause line. Uh, we're going to come back to foreign policy in a second and, and those splits. But Peggy Noonan, who made the biggest impression on you? What, what is Ted Cruz up, up to? Uh, it's hard to say as you look at him. Sometimes he seems to be a guy who wants to be president and is putting himself forward. Sometimes he acts like a guy who, I don't want to be president, meaning he doesn't do some standard peaceful party embracing and bringing uh, people together. I think what he was part of, the CPAC thing, uh, with Paul Ryan and with Rand Paul, what struck me so much the past week is the intellectual diversity, the diversity of stands and stances, and how everybody pretty peacefully, often with good nature, was debating each other and trying to figure out the actual meaning currently of republicanism. I, I you're absolutely and, right. I mean, a CPAC is, you know, it's part political convention. And some it's people part, are saying it's irrelevant. It's right. part revival. Uh, it's part carnival scene. But there was one of everything. It really looked like yeah. a Noah's Ark. There was one of every type of specimen <laughs> within the Republican Party. There was social conservatives, libertarians, foreign policy hawks, foreign policy doves. Yes. And everybody was saying their piece and got a pretty good reception. Actually, to me, one of the takeaways was that Ted Cruz was not the story out of the CPAC. To me, the big takeaways was, were that Chris Christie got a very good and warm reception, did a great job on his speech. Uh, Rick Perry got a comeback. He started wearing tortoiseshell glasses and got students <laughs> academic was able to remember his he wearing tortoiseshell glasses? Marco, Marco, like Rubio, Marco Rubio owns the foreign policy mantle amongst the new generation of Republicans. Those were the big things I saw at CPEC. Yeah. And, and Representative Castro, do you <clears> think <throat> they expanded their brand, a, a Democrat looking there? Did the Republicans Maybe. really expand their brand? I, I don't think they have, you know, and every year CPAC really is a demonstration of their extremism. Um, and, you know, there was a very telling picture that was tweeted out of uh, a panel about minority engagement and minority outreach, and the room was literally empty. Uh, so it's as if the party has not moved forward at all uh, with that since 2012. I, I, I want to move to the politics of the Ukraine crisis, and, and you brought that up, Jeff. There is this clear division over foreign policy. I want to, I want to read something that Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted. He said, it started with Benghazi. When you kill Americans and nobody pays a price, you invite this type of aggression. Another said, Putin basically came to the conclusion after Benghazi, Syria, Egypt, everything Obama has been engaged in. He's a weak, indecisive leader. Pretty incredible tweets there. It is. And this signals a I guess a break that the old adage of the politics stops at the water's edge is completely out the window. I mean, but we did see sort of a difference in who was willing to criticize the president. I thought Senator Rubio again distinguished himself by basically saying now is not the time to criticize President Obama. You can dislike his foreign policy, but he is not why Putin is doing this. And I think that's pretty much right on. And he, is, it an, is it an appropriate time to be criticizing foreign policy? I mean, it's happened before. I have been struck, actually, when it comes to criticizing President Obama, he 
it doesn't seem to me in some respects is acting like there is an air of crisis or urgency here. He's he's sort of off for the weekend in a way that startles me in in the middle of a crisis. Look, you can always uh, criticize an American president, particularly on, on this case, I, I suppose you can say that Putin did not do what he did because of the American president. But Putin sometimes makes his moves when he perceives an American president to be weak. He did that in 08 at the end of the Bush era, when Bush was weak. He's doing it as he reads Mr. Obama now. Uh, you, you saw from the very beginning how this was all about politics. Right away, the Republicans jumped on the president when this should have been a moment that the country was really rallying around uh, the United States and coming together. And that was very strange to see. And I don't think we've seen something like it in the past. You think George W. Oh. Bush would agree oh, with that? No. That oh, there hasn't been criticism? <laughs> well, but I think not at the beginning, <laughs> not when it started, uh, you know, not, not oh, I think when everything There's been, there's been plenty yeah. of Everybody. criticism. I think there's a stark difference between when we are under attack and when we are a third party to an international crisis, as far as criticism. And, I, and some of the criticisms are very valid. There's been a lot of vacillation, lack of clear direction uh, blinking by this administration. Now, we are where we are, and I think it's time that people get together and what the actions should be, what the sanctions need to be, and where we go forward. I, I want to move to the Obamacare delay. The latest news is President Obama now saying, if you like your plan, you can keep it for two more years. Take a look at some of the headlines. So his latest delay in fully implementing the law will allow insurers to offer health plans that do not meet the law's minimum coverage requirements for another two years. So is this just another example of this law not being ready for prime time? We'll hit you with that. Well, well, thank you. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's an acknowledgement that some folks had plans out there that they wanted to keep. Uh, these are not the best plans in the market, but I think it's an acknowledgement by the administration that some folks do want to keep them. It's also an acknowledgement that some <clears throat> Democrats are in huge trouble in Senate races, and they really um, are hoping for some relief. Yeah, it's, it's also all about an acknowledgement that this whole thing didn't work from the day the website uh, was, un was unveiled. I really think... Obamacare as a domestic public policy event is even huger than all of us think. It's a day-to-day -day story, and so you know the latest story, and, and it is what it is. But this is a most extraordinary failure by an administration that put all of its chips on it working, and it is not. It's also significant, I think, that the president had every chance in the past year. Republicans were coming to him and saying, please hold this off. You can't cancel it, but delay it for a year. Do this, do that. He would not play ball with them. It would have been so much better for him if you know, he had. Their, only, like if he had, their I, only approach has been repeal. You heard it from Ted Cruz, who's essentially the leader of the Tea Party. It's either for them, it's either all or nothing. And if you look at the way they've tried to do it, it's just repeal or it's nothing. They don't want to improve it. To me, what was interesting about this, last, about this last announcement about this new delay is that I think there's almost a numbing to yeah. all these delays and exceptions. I'm having a hard time keeping track yeah. of what's in, what's, what so what's so the yeah, and he recover what happens not. Or what is there is still though, a bill? Voters will not get cancellation notices a month before the midterms. Right. That's the point uh, here. That's the biggest point. Yeah. So it is politics, no question. Absolutely. Certainly politics and everything. Come Always. on, we're in Washington, D.C. Right. But is well, there still a law? Is there still an Obamacare law? It's been changed in 25 ways. It was 2,000 ways. pages, so there's still... Oh, it oh absolutely. my goodness. I mean, what the heck is it? People. people are benefiting from it. Okay, thank you all.